In this devlog, we'll discuss some, ver some, some short code that was pushed in the GitHub repository for the artificial neural network written in C++, which was the, the, the code mainly related to determining the error of a neural network. So the idea is for a neural network, you'd like to guess a particular pattern or you'd like to classify a particular input Let's say you have an input of 101. You'd like to determine what the value is for that given input, whether it's, it represents a face, a cat, a dog, or whatever category you'd like to, um, to, to, to guess for a particular input. So that's what the feedforward function was, was doing from the last video. So the feedforward function will take in a set of input. Let's say for this example, I have um, an input of size 3 because my topology is 3 to 3, meaning 3 values for the input layer, 2 values for the hidden layer, and 3 outputs for the output layer, or the set of categories we'd like to guess for a given input. So once we set that input for the neural network, it will perform a feed forward, which will multiply the input with the weights, produce the values for the hidden layer, activate it, multiply it to the corresponding weights to produce the output of size three. So we're actually expecting three values in the output layer. Now to determine the error, we need some sort of target or how far Rather, rather the, the objective, the actual output that our neural network is trying to guess. So naturally, given that, that output, the set of values in the output layer, we'd like to compare those set of values to the target provided to the neural network. So uh, to do this, what the, the functions that were created were the uh, following. Oh, before I go to the functions, we added several variables, I think three new variables, to the neural network class. A double error, which corresponds to the current error of the neural network, or the total error for the neural network. A vector of double errors, which would correspond to a set of errors for this network. Now, the reason why we're using a set of errors and a global error is because for the output layer, we might have a, 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 a size of more than one, meaning we have three values for the output. And so this vector of errors will represent the errors, the, the set of errors for each neuron output when we compare it to the target later on. This also means that the target or the objective that we pass to our neural network should have the same size as the output layer. That is why, uh, okay, so for the target, naturally, it will be a vector of doubles as well. Okay, so these are the four new variables that were added to the neural network. The functions, we have a bunch of utility functions, such as getting the total error, getting all the errors, right? Where in the, the total error, the global error, is actually just a sum of all the errors in the vector double um, errors. Uh, we also have a function to set errors. Now, this er set errors doesn't really call anything or doesn't really accept anything as a set of arguments, but rather what it does is that it expects that the neural network already have, or that the neural network will already have a set of targets, right, represented by this target variable. And what set error will do is that it will, okay, Set errors will take all the targets. Now I have a simple assertion here to make sure that the target size is, is greater than zero. So uh, as, as well as the, it should be the same size as the, um, the size of the error output or the number of neurons in the error or the output layer. So what set errors will do is that it will initially set the error to zero and then take in the output layer index, which is defined by this layer size minus one. It will get all the output neurons from that output layer index and loop against the targets. Okay, so it will go through each target, determine the error, which can be easily done by a given error function, or a, what's called a cost function, 
Now, the cost function in this case is simply the difference between the activated value and the target value. Okay, there are a lot of cost functions out there, but we'll, we'll do the simplest one, which is just getting how far the, the value, the activated value is from the output neuron at some index i compared to the target or the objective that we pass to the neural network. So we have a value for that, and we set it as the errors, as a value for the, for, uh, for the errors array or the errors vector at that given index i. And then we do a summation to get the global errors. Now we also have, a, another, we also have another vector called historical errors, which I, th I think I forgot to mention, that simply stores all the global errors at each iteration of the neural network. So later on when we go to training, we'd like to determine how much the error lowers or how much we can reduce the error after we train the network at a um, feed forward and back propagation pass. Okay, so we have a nice historical errors variable there to store all the global errors that occurred after each iteration or after each feed forward of the network. Okay. So yeah, those are the short code that was the, uh, that the, those are the, the code that was added to the repository. Uh, so I, I wasn't able to create a video for that, but it's rather just a simple uh, process, and we can actually test that by using the following. So I have a three to three neural network here, wherein the output layer size is three, and what I do is I set the current target, right, my objective as the input. Okay, so. My input is the vector of input values, 1, 0, 1, but at the same time, it's also my target as well. Okay. This type of setup is otherwise known as an autoencoder neural network, wherein the neural network will try to learn how to recognize the input. Okay. Uh, and then it also has this feature uh, of, of representing the, of having the middle layer represent the latent variables or the sort of the reduced feature vector of this uh, particular input. But anyway, we'll go into that when we discuss autoencoders. But basically, my target is the same as my input. So what I want the network to learn is, uh, I, what I want the network to do is to be able to learn how to reconstruct the input. Okay. Essentially, that's what it's doing. So I don't have the code for training yet, so I'll do a single feed forward pass for the neural network and then call the set errors function so it will compute the errors based on the target and then print the network to console as well as the global error. Okay. So if you try to run that, okay, you can see that it prints out the feed forward similar to the last video and then now we have the error term. So that's just it for the for computing the errors. We have a bunch of variables that will store the error values, and we take the global error by computing how far the output is from the target. So in this case, the target was the same as the input, so we're just subtracting each value of the output layer to the input layer, sum it all up to get a global error. Okay. So the next video for this one will be the backpropagation part wherein we actually train the network using this value, this error value, and we hope to minimize this error value at each training phase. Okay, so that's it for this video, and that's it for this devlog.